Hi guys, it is a lovely and very exciting autumn night here in the lonely trailer at the end of the road in the swamp in Florida. It is a Monday night. I think it might be somewhere around November 7th or 8th, 2023. It is, this is my fourth night without internet. And uh, <laughs> I think I'll be back on the web tomorrow, but uh, since I have to do what people used to do before the internet, uh, what I am doing, for those of the few of you still with me, of course, is I am reading this manuscript. I wrote this little book I wrote in 1980 called Maurice and the Rainbow Maker, and we have arrived at the final chapter. We are at chapter 7, the very last chapter of Little Mo's exciting adventure in the land of up above trying to return a piece of the rainbow back to the rainbow maker. And it's been quite an adventure, but it is time to wrap it up as Mo discovers the simple truth. Okay, what is the simple truth? <clears throat> Excuse me, a tiny female voice said, could you please get up? You're lying on top of me. I'm terribly sorry, ma'am, Mo said to the second voice in <clears throat> ten minutes. He jumped up. I don't know what's the matter with me today. I've been walking around in a fog all afternoon. I keep sitting on everybody. I didn't used to be such a klutz. It's quite all right, said the voice. Some folks don't see me until they bump right into me. As the voice talked, Maurice slowly but surely made out the delicate form of a beautiful young woman sitting on the forest floor. Her body and long flowing gown were such a pale luna moth green that Mo could see right through her. She shimmered like pale moonlight on a river, and she radiated a warm glow like Mo's piece of rainbow did. Begging your pardon, ma'am, but you are hard to see, said Mo. That's what a lot of folks tell me, laughed the delicate young woman. I don't know why so many folks don't ever see me, though. I'm not invisible. Maybe they're just not looking for me, or if they are looking for me, they're looking for me in the wrong places. I can usually be found in a quiet part of a quiet forest, though. Maurice took an instant liking to the lovely wisp of a woman and wanted to find out more about her. My name's Mo, he said, and I come from down below. Who are you? My name is Simple Truth, said the young woman. Her voice was softer than ducklings' bellies. That's a very pretty name, said Mo. He meant it, too. It fits you very well. Thank you, said Simple Truth. Tell me, Mo, what brings you to be traveling through up above? You must be a brave little mole to leave your house down below like you did and stay up above for three days. Well, actually, I wasn't planning to stay so long, said Mo. I only wanted to take a peek. So began Mo's, Mo's tale, the story you have just heard. For the first time since leaving High Hopes, Mo had found a friend he really wanted to talk to, and Simple Truth was a very good listener, never yawning, never squirming, and never interrupting. The forest grew dark, the stars came out, and Bump on a Log snored peacefully 
only inches away. Maurice talked into the night. He told simple truth about first finding his piece of rainbow. He told her about walking through the fields of opportunity and leaving the beaten path. Mo spoke fond fondly of calm before the storm, but his voice was shaky when telling simple truth about the creeps, willies, and heebie-jeebies and about spending the night with them in trouble. He brightened when he remembered security and how good she had made him feel, especially when she told him where the rainbow maker lived. Maurice had turned into a quite a little storyteller by the time he recounted his trek up the pinnacle of perfection. He told simple truth about drinking from the fountain of knowledge. He spoke proudly of winning the fight with the seal of approval and coming so close to reaching the pinnacle of perfection. Mo didn't drop his head in shame when he told simple truth about slipping from the mountain, even though he could feel salty tears running down his face. Somehow he knew simple truth would understand how awful he felt when he was in the doghouse and in the pits of depression. She would never laugh at him or his tears. But Simple Truth and Mo laughed over the story of Cray and Z. They wondered if they were still acting like nuts in trees. Mo almost got sick when he thought of being inside out and lost in the state of confusion. Simple Truth felt sorry for the pandemonium and she felt sorry for Mo spending his scary afternoon lost in a fog. Mo finally reached the end of his story. My goodness, said Mo when he realized how long he'd been talking. Where are my manners? I'm sure I've bored you to death. Not at all, said Simple Truth. It sounds to me like you've had quite an adventure for such a little mole. You had me hanging on every word, even though I've heard almost the same story a thousand times before. You have, asked Mo, totally amazed. Do you mean I am not the first one who's gone looking for the rainbow maker and never found him? Actually, you are the first who's gone looking for the rainbow maker, laughed Simple Truth. Hundreds of folks have gone looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, though. Others have gone searching for the bluebird of happiness, the great white hope, and the American dream, just to name a few. It seems like it's usually the ones that have gone looking for such elusive things that end up meeting me. Did any of them have any better luck than I did, asked Mo. No, none of them did, said Simple Truth, but a whole lot of them had journeys very similar to yours. How is that? asked Mo. Well, to begin with, began Simple Truth, nearly everyone who ends up meeting me has met a lot of the same folks and visited the same places that you have. Nearly every one of them has wandered without stopping through the fields of opportunity. Most of them have wandered off the beaten path which is the best way there is to get into trouble, as you well know. <clears throat> I'm sorry to interrupt, said Mo, but I've often wondered what would have happened if I had never left the beaten path. Would I have found the Rainbow Maker then? No, said Simple Truth, and what's worse is that you would never have not found him either. You would have gone through your whole life never knowing for sure whether the thing you sought most even existed or not. 
That's a very empty life, Mo. Living in the shadow of a dream. A dream you would never have any chance of having come true. Yet, thousands live like that their whole lives because they never get off the beaten path. It's so sad. So I did right to turn off the beaten path, asked Mo. Yes, Mo, you did right, laughed Simple Truth. Even though it got you into trouble for a while, you found your way out of it, and you're a much better mole for doing it. I'm glad of that, said Mo. Tell me, what other places and people did folks you've met meet? For one, said Simple Truth, they all met somebody like security. She made them feel good, but after all was said and done, it turned out security didn't know what she was talking about. In fact, security is many times confused with her twin sister, false security. You've got to be careful. I think you met false security. I think you're right, laughed Mo. Anyway, it's that simple truth. One way or another, the folks who finally meet me all end up climbing the pinnacle of perfection. Some never end up meeting me, though. Some, like the blooming idiot, stay too long at the fountain of knowledge and you, knew, and you know how pitiful they are. Others spend their entire lives fighting with the seal of approval, never realizing how easy that fight is to win. Many never win that silly fight, and it's very sad. But even the ones that get by the seal of approval still never reach the pinnacle of perfection. Do you mean nobody has ever reached the pinnacle of perfection, asked Mo? Not even the rainbow maker? Not even the rainbow maker, Mo, said Simple Truth. The pinnacle of perfection is too hard to climb. It's as simple as that. Everyone slips sooner or later, no matter how careful they are or how many times they try. Every one of them lands in the doghouse for a while, and the ones that really get upset, the ones that lose hope, end up in the pits of depression Many never find their way back out of there. They spend the rest of their lives crying and never take the time to laugh. That's awful, said Mo. <coughs> so what happens next? The same thing that happened to me? <coughs> More or less, said Simple Truth. By the time... Someone has managed to get out of the pits of depression. They're pretty close to meeting me. The only thing left is to wander through the state of confusion, which gets worse and worse until they become lost in a fog. <clears throat> like the pits of depression, some people never find their way out of the fog. But others finally decide they have spent enough time looking for something they're never going to find. They don't give up hope. They simply realize that they're never going to find what they've been looking for for so long, whether it's bluebirds of happiness or rainbow makers when they decide they're going to have to learn to live with it, the fog lifts, and they're only a few minutes away from meeting me. 
and they never find what they've been looking for for so long? Mo asked with trembling voice. No, said, Trump, said simple truth. They never do. Mo wrenched the next question out of his throat. And you're telling me, he said, that I will never find the Rainbow Maker? No, Mo, you will never find the Rainbow Maker. Maurice was stunned. His head was swimming in a sea of confusion. He would never find the Rainbow Maker as long as he lived. All his work was in vain. All he had to show for it was his tiny piece of the rainbow, which he held tightly in his little pink hand. The truth hurt so bad. Mo looked at simple truth, and she was smiling. What are you smiling about, Mo wailed. Mo, why do you think you will never be able to find the Rainbow Maker. Mo did not like riddles. I don't know. I guess I'm not bold enough, he said. Now don't start that, Simple Truth said. Come on, Mo, think. The answer is in the palm of your hand. Mo looked in the palm of his hand, but all that was there was his piece of the rainbow. He didn't know what Simple Truth was talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Honestly, some folks are so blind, said Simple Truth. She rolled her eyes in mock disgust, dragging out each word she said. The simple truth of the matter is that you haven't been able to find the Rainbow Maker because there is no rainbow maker to be found. That was too much for Mo to take. He forgot his manners. Worse yet, he forgot to think before he spoke. How can you say that, he blurted out. Of course there's a rainbow maker. If there weren't, there wouldn't be any rainbows. Simple Truth waited patiently for Maurice to calm down. She explained ever so carefully, Mo, there is no rainbow maker for the simple reason that everybody must make his or her own rainbow. You can't go through life following somebody else's rainbow. That wouldn't be fair to either one of you. Besides, as I said, folks must make their own rainbows, and you're no different from anyone else. <coughs> Tell me, simple truth, said Mo, how do I make my own rainbow? I won't tell you, she said, but I'll help you figure it out. Mo wasn't in the mood to play games, <clears throat> but <clears throat> he knew he'd better keep his bad moods to himself. Okay, let's start, said Simple Truth. First, what do you have in your hand? <clears throat> I have a little piece of the rainbow, said Mo. This was silly, he thought. And where did it come from, she asked. It came from the rainbow, of course, said Mo. He didn't see where all this foolishness was leading. Okay, now look very closely at the piece of rainbow and tell me what it looks like, said Simple Truth. Think carefully. This is your last clue. Maurice stared at the little piece of rainbow like he never had before. It looked like an egg, only it was flat. A seed! 
yell no. It's a rainbow seed. He danced merrily up and down the log, waking the bump on a log. Exactly, laughed Simple Truth. And what do you do with a seed? That was easy. Plant it, yelled Mo. He danced up and down the log again, laughing at bump on the logs, grouchy grumblings about the noise. Very good, said Simple Truth. Go home and plant your rainbow seed, and after the first rain, you will have your rainbow. Maurice was so happy, he jumped off the log to hug Simple Truth. Oh, Simple Truth, I am so glad I found you, he yelled. But by the time he reached her, she had faded and disappeared like the rainbow had done three days earlier. Three days? It seemed like a lifetime. Dawn was already breaking in the east, and Mo knew it was time to head back home down below. He knew his parents were frantic, not to mention angry at him. He held the rainbow seed in his mouth, took one last look at up above, and started digging straight down. Maurice buried into the cool, dark dirt, and in a few minutes he was very surprised to come out on a mole tunnel only a few minutes from his own house. Mo dug into his very own mole hill a few minutes later. Mo's mother cried and cried when she saw her son because she had been so worried about him. They hugged and danced around the dirt floor of the kitchen. Mo almost couldn't bear to face his father, who was sitting at the breakfast table. I ought to tan your furry little hide, Mo's father growled, but your mama made me promise not to. <clears throat> he tried to look tough, but Mo could see a smile trying to break his father's face. His father was actually proud of him. After a big breakfast of beetle eggs, Mo went to the roof of the mole hill to plant his rainbow seed. He treated the seed like it was a piece of gold, planting it in the dirt roof of the mole hill right above his bedroom. Mo kept his ear peeled for the sound of falling rain every day for three days. Finally it came, and Mo jumped up from the dinner table, too excited to eat his blueberry-filled snail shell, and that was his favorite. Maurice burrowed straight up to up above. He looked across the field and saw Thelonious J. Toad sitting under his toadstool to escape the rain. But Mo was too happy to even notice the rain. He danced around the field in the rain, feeling refreshed by the shower. The rain tapered off to a drizzle, and in a few minutes the clouds started to break. The clouds parted, and a ray of warm golden sunshine shot out and landed on Mo's molehill. A burst of color burst forth from the muddy little mountain and through the sky and arched itself across the universe to disappear behind the pinnacle of perfection far to the west. Mo flopped down on his back in the wet grass to gawk at his very own rainbow. As he watched the splendid bands of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet shimmer in the sunlight, he caught sight of a movement in the sky beneath the rainbow. A butterfly fluttered by, and Mo saw it was the color of violets in the spring. High hopes, hollered Mo. He stood and waved. The butterfly turned around. Mo, is that you, she called? She flew over and together, high hopes and Mo danced under Mo's rainbow. 
I told you we would meet again under the rainbow. Mo laughed. In a few minutes, Mo's rainbow began to fade. He wondered who would find his rainbow seed and if they too would go in search of the rainbow maker. High hopes lighted on Mo's head, and in the silence they watched Mo's rainbow fade and finally fizzle out. Wasn't that beautiful, said Mo. He was very proud of his rainbow, and he hoped a lot of other folks had seen it and enjoyed it too. That was the prettiest rainbow I have ever seen, said High Hopes, and I've seen a lot of rainbows. Well, I guess I should get back to my tunnels, worms, and tree roots, said Mo. After all, I am a mole. You will keep in touch, asked High Hopes. Of course, laughed Mo, and when I'm not around, I will always have you in my heart, High Hopes, right next to my rainbow. He kissed her goodbye. Maurice watched High Hopes flutter away, and he headed back to the molehill. Somehow, it did not bother him like it used to that he was going to spend the rest of his life digging tunnels, chasing worms, and banging his head on tree roots all day, Maurice knew that he can always come up above for a vacation. He had his friend High Hopes, and for the rest of his life, Maurice had his very own rainbow. <laughs> anyway, Congratulations, Maurice, for becoming your own rainbow maker. And that brings us to the end of this wild little tale. And uh, <laughs> for uh, anyone who has made it to the end, who knows me and uh, my opinion of hi ha hi hi ha anyway. You can see the uh, a little bit of the trip, long, strange trip I have taken in my own uh, crazy life since uh, writing this 43 years ago. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because uh, I have to go plant a rainbow seed. <clears throat> I highly suggest you get out there and plant your own rainbow seed while you still can. Bye, guys. <laughs>